Welcome back to Fox 8 News in the morning, 820 on your Monday. The number of coronavirus cases spiking locally, nationally, even globally. Pediatric infectious disease specialist at Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital, Dr. Amy Edwards. She joins us live this morning. Doctor, good to see you. Good morning. Unfortunately, under these circumstances, let's talk about the surge, what you're seeing at university hospitals. We've been talking about more testing for the past several weeks. So is this the reason why we're seeing it? No, actually it's not. So certainly we have been doing more testing, but that's really starting to plateau. Testing has been liberalized for several weeks now. What we're actually seeing is an increase in positivity, meaning more and more swabs are coming back positive, and that usually indicates increased circulation. Now, is that the reason we're hearing about the certs like 30 states, but they're all south? Uh, do mm -hmm. you, what's the reason for that? Well, you know, a lot of these states were some of the first to open up. Some actually didn't even lock down that strictly. Um, some, I mean, if you look at the speed with which Georgia and Texas opened up, it was breathtaking. Um, Florida as well was pretty aggressive. And, you know, there were a lot of people who founded, you know, warning signals back then. I think they were hopeful that, you know, with the hot weather and stuff that, that maybe they would get lucky. But it turns out, you know, that the heat is not as protective as we were all hoping. That's interesting. Um, let's talk about young people. We're seeing a surge in young people mm -hmm. now getting this. What is the cause for that? I, well, I'm guessing you know, maybe social distancing, doctor, because exactly. that hasn't caught on. You know, I remember being in your teens and 20s and 30s. You thought that you were invincible and that nothing would happen to you mm -hmm. and that everything was going to be fine. And there's magical thinking that goes on when you're that young. And of course, the message that's been pounded into us is, you know, it's the old people, it's the sick people, it's the people with pre-existing medical conditions. And that is still very, very true. But young people can still get serious illness. We are still seeing people admitted to the hospital who are young. Um, many of them do fine. You know, they need a couple days in the hospital to help them out and they, they do okay. But nobody wants to be admitted to the hospital for three or four or five days or a week or more. And there's no guarantee. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict that just because you're 25 that you're going to do just fine. So can we give them examples maybe on how maybe they should act or, or at least try possibly? Because as you said, it's difficult for young people. They're back out in the community, out at the bars and the restaurants and parties. Yeah. The only thing I would say is, is what we've been saying all along, you know, wear your mask. Maybe it's not popular. Maybe it's not cool. I don't know. I'm 40, so I'm past the whole cool <laughs> thing. Um, but, you know, wear your mask. You can hang out with your friends, but do it outside. Do it at a distance. You know, go to a park where you can sit kind of away from each other if you don't, if you don't live in the same home. Um, so I, I'm not saying don't hang out with each other or don't have fun. Just try to structure it in such a way that it's safe. And the main, main message has got to be to wear your mask. Sure. It's, it's sometimes difficult to get that um, through them. But let's talk about uh, blood types. And are certain blood types, we've been hearing this over the past maybe week and a half to two weeks, are they certain one more susceptible to catching the virus? Well, not more susceptible to catching the virus as far as I can tell. Um, the, the, this actually was first um, described by scientists in China who noted that uh, patients in the ICU uh, were, mar were more likely um, to be of a certain blood type compared to the general population. So if you look at the, at the uh, proportion of A and O blood in the general population, it didn't match uh, that in the ICU. That wasn't immediately repeatable, um, but there is some emerging data um, that maybe certain blood types are at slightly higher mm -hmm. risk for worse outcome. But that is not, I mean, we're talking about like a couple percentage points. It's not a dramatic, it's like, it's not saying that if you have, you know, type A blood, you're 100% protected and COVID's not a problem for you. It, these are very slight differences that we're noticing. Okay. Dr. Edwards, it's uh, nice to check in with you. We ha always have a lot of questions, so it's nice to get our questions answered with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Appreciate it. You too.